Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And it's been a few weeks since I uh, logged a Mr. Sci-Fi video and checked in with you guys. And uh, the reason is because, in addition to, to doing these videos, I'm a, I'm a working writer. I'm writing scripts and books and making movies and TV shows and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, but I wanted to check in. It's been an amazing time. Uh, and I just sort of wanted to give you an, um, a, a sort of a bird's eye view of uh, <laughs> what it is to do science fiction uh, in my world. So um, essentially, I just got back from France. There was a trade show for the uh, the world television industry called MIP TV. It was held in Cannes, France. And some of you know I run a round table of writers and directors and actors and producers, etc. Several thousand people. We meet every Thursday in LA, as well as having offshoots all across the country. We get 50 or 60 people every Thursday. So one of our regulars is a friend of mine from the BBC, who's a journalist, and he was going to MIP with some other table members to uh, pitch various shows that he wants to do. And um, and he invited me. He was renting a villa in in uh, a town adjacent to Cannes called Le Canet. And uh, he invited me. So after some trepidation, I actually called a friend of mine. I was nervous, and I called a friend of mine, uh, my friend uh, Mike Tennyson, who's also a writer, to kind of buck me up. And he walked over to his refrigerator. So let me read you a quote I have on my refrigerator, held there by a magnet. And the quote was, um, uh, "The bolder I am, <clears throat> the bolder I am, the better things go." And the person who had said it was me. <laughs> So, and I had no memory of saying this, and uh, but since he had quoted me to me, I had, well, I've got to do it. So I hopped an airplane um, uh, to Oslo, Norway, and then and from there to, uh, to Nice in France, where I was picked up, and, uh, <clears throat> and went to MIP. Now, in the meantime, of course, many of you know that I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm in post-production on the first two-hour Space Command story. I shot the third of the second one. I've written the first eight hours of the, of the first season of Space Command. I've outlined hours... Um, 9 through 12, so I have an entire season laid out. Elaine and I have been writing and directing and producing with our wonderful Space Command team. And uh, so in the meantime, I'm, I'm working to sell Space Command as a show. So a lot of my friends who run network shows have been recommending me to agents and managers. Guillermo del Toro's manager was kind enough to sit, to sit down with me and lay out an entire strategy for how to sell the show. And, uh, and um, so I was being considered by the head of movies at CAA, and he read a pilot of mine, which he loved, a pilot I just recently wrote for an executive at Sony, and uh, he read the book I just wrote with Guillermo del Toro. And while I'm in France, he, uh, he says, well, do you have a, uh, a feature I can read? And uh, <clears throat> so I sent him a feature I recently wrote called Fugitive Space. I'm a huge fan of Aliens. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, the James Cameron film with uh, Sigourney Weaver, and I thought it'd be fun. It's been a long time since we've seen a movie with that kind of uh, edgy quality, that kind of humor, that kind of breakneck, wonderful structure uh, set in space, just a, a great science fiction action piece with wonderful characters. So I sat down to write one, and I did. <laughs> I did. And it has great lead roles, male and female lead roles, etc. So <clears throat> he reads it on a Sunday while I'm in France, uh, and by Monday he says, I love it. I want to send it to uh, to uh, Jennifer Lawrence, to Spielberg, to J.J. Abrams, and what do you think of Will Smith? And I go, well, I really like Will Smith. I mean, I Robot and I Am Legend and Hancock and Independence Day is a, is a film I love. I'm I'm not uh, kicked out of it by that 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 cold virus, you know, computer virus thing that a lot of people <laughs> bail on in that film. And uh, so. Uh, so by Monday, he'd sent it to Will Smith, and I was emailing back and forth with Guillermo del Toro about it, <clears throat> and he was emailing me, sounds great, you know, so we'll see. And, um, and then he sent it to J.J. Abrams, so I emailed J.J., and J.J. emailed me immediately back <clears throat> that, you know, it's in his pipeline, and we're moving forward. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if it sells. We'll see if it gets made. It, it would be a thrill. And, uh, but there are many, many <clears throat> directors and actors that this would be an extremely good project for. So, so at the same time, I'm in France, I'm at MIP, I'm, I'm pitching uh, Space Command, and also I have in my back pocket uh, the Magic Time trilogy of novels I did where all the machines stop running and magic comes back. It started as a two-hour spec pilot Elaine and I wrote that was optioned eight times uh, by Henson, Davis Entertainment, etc. And then uh, <clears throat> um, I wrote it as a trilogy of novels with, with Maya Bonhoff and uh, Barbara Hambly, etc. And it hit the bestseller list, and I'm very proud of it. And so... So, uh, so I'm walking around the convention floor, and the fact that I'm now represented by the head of movies at CAA, which is a huge agency, the fact, you know, that things are going well is, is a great calling card. And at the same time, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of my friends who run network shows are mentoring me, including Frank Spotnitz, who runs Man of the High Castle. He's been advising and opening doors and just being phenomenal. And uh, so I have a, a breakfast meeting with him in France at MIP, 
And I give them the Magic Time novels, and I say it'd be great to do this as a show together because a lot of companies are looking for um, international co-productions. And because Magic Time has all the world stopped running in terms of guns, in terms of machines, and magic come back and certain people transform into creatures, it's essentially like Game of Thrones in a modern modern setting or Lord of the Rings. And uh, so I can see it as a, as a foreign co-production. So Frank's going to read the book in the next week or two, and uh, we'll see if we do it as a show together, which would be extremely wonderful because I think Man in the High Castle is a work of genius and I, it's a show I love and I love the novel of course. So uh, so it was a very good week all told and I was meeting with companies like Endemol and Fremantle and talking to the BBC and uh, you know Frank has mentioned companies for me to meet in London so I'll be flying there in the next few weeks and uh, uh, you know and basically so essentially at this point I've got a feature project that's going out to big people. I've got, you know, the Space Command and Magic Time and Lilith, which is the pilot I just wrote as, as all potential series. And I'm, and I'm, I also have been writing a book about my mom, a memoir that CAA wants to read and see about possibly selling as a book and as a movie. So <clears throat> I have to do some little tweaks to that manuscript and then send it in. So <laughs> not a bad week, not a bad week. And in the meantime, we're, we're working on Space Command. We're dealing with the visual effects. We're moving forward on that. And just, you know, looking for the opportunity to finish it, to sell it as a show, to um, to get it up on its legs. Because I think now is the time uh, for hopeful visions of the future, for the possibility of all of us coming together and helping each other and creating a better tomorrow rather than a worse one. I think it's a vital, vital, vital message. And uh, it was really <clears throat> amazing to be at MIP where all the people from all over the world come to work together to create television that all of us are seeing uh, you know, many of us are now seeing shows from other other parts of the world. Thanks to Netflix, I'm able to watch TV series from all over the world as well as films. And um, uh, the final day that we were out and about uh, in uh, in France, we actually, uh, my friends and I, uh, hung out and went sightseeing in Provence with some friends we'd made from Malaysia that we met at MIP. And again, it's uh, and we were talking about working with them. And so we live in a world that's now all joined together by mutual concerns, mutual hopes, mutual dreams, and uh, the internet and this amazing technology we have. And by the way, you know, we talk about science fiction and space, and the internet uh, wouldn't exist if not for the satellites in space that are able to communicate with the Earth and, uh, and link us. And so Arthur C. Clarke first envisioned communication satellites, the possibility of that, wrote about it in fiction and nonfiction, and, uh, and here we are. So, so anyone who thinks that space is not vital to us is sorely mistaken. And I think our future lies out among the moons and planets of our solar system and out beyond the stars. So, so, <laughs> so that said, it's been just a phenomenal time for me. And the cherry on top is I recently ran into Ron Thornton. Ron, uh, I first met Ron when I was developing Captain uh, Power and the Soldiers of the Future uh, for, as a TV series, and uh, Ron was a model maker. He built Castle Volcania and, uh, and just amazing, amazing miniatures for that show, and he had the idea of doing CG, computer-generated imagery <clears throat> for characters, for spaceships, etc., and uh, he was starting by doing that with some of the, the villains on uh, Captain Power, but uh, I brought aboard, uh, they wanted me to story edit the show, I was writing features at the time, so I recommended someone I knew from animation uh, who had never story edited a live action show, but I guaranteed him. And they hired him, and it was Joe Straczynski. And the two producers were John Copeland and Doug Netter, and uh, Joe had an idea for Babylon 5. And Ron, who again was on Captain Power, said, well, you know, Rather than using models for the space station, the spaceships, which all the other shows were doing and had been doing for decades, uh, we could do CG. And he generated a CG um, test of Babylon 5. And that, along with Joe's terrific pilot script, sold the show. And, uh, and the rest is history. And Ron went on from there, from Babylon 5 to Star Trek Voyager, where he won an Emmy, thence to uh, uh, Enterprise. He worked on Buffy, worked on tons and tons of stuff. And, uh, and I ran into him recently, and now he's come aboard Space Command. So we're, uh, we're working on generating the opening sequence, which is going to be just spectacular, and I'm raising more money to afford that. And I think that, along with the rough cut, along with all we've shot, along with the trailer, will sell the show. And so we'll all be able to sit back and turn on Amazon or Netflix or Sci-Fi or wherever 
and watch uh, the full season of Space Command and beyond. So, um, so that's uh, that's a little picture into my life, my busy few weeks, and uh, and thanks for thanks for taking this journey with me, uh, Mark Zikri, uh, Mr. Sci-Fi, Mark Zikri of Space Command, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.